Hi everyone, my name is Hayes. I'm an artist and speed painter from Malaysia and today I will be sharing how I create this illustration in Procreate and how we get to painting them on a wall for my client. So let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is a screen protector for iPad that simulates the texture and the surface of paper so that when you use it with your Procreate, you'll feel like you're drawing on paper instead. So this is the package that I received from Lucas and as you can see, inside there are a pack of accessories and he even included two screen protectors for my iPad. So the first thing I do is I try on the screen protector on my iPad and check the size and see if there's any cutting necessary but to my surprise there isn't any cutting necessary and it was perfectly fitted for my iPad. Then I use my dust cloth from one of my spectacle cases to clean the screen first. As you can see, my screen is very very oily because I sweat all the time. I have this condition where I sweat a lot from my hands and feet but not through my body. So my iPad suffer a lot and I've been struggling to paint on Procreate because of this. And then I use the alcohol wipes that's included in the accessory pack to clean my screen. It takes a good amount of wipes to get my screen to be reflective and oil free. Once that is done, I use one of the tapes that was provided in the accessory pack to stick the remaining dust out of my screen. Then I reposition the screen protector and I use the other stickers to stick it firmly down to position them at the lower bottom of the screen first. And then I slowly let the screen protector stick itself to my iPad screen and try to get any bubbles that is surfacing out of the way. After that, I remove the top layer of protection plastic and there you have it. I have successfully installed the screen protector on my iPad. I'm so happy with this screen protector because there's no longer any non-responsive spots due to my sweaty palms as some parts of my screens were wet. So I would highly recommend this product to anyone who is having the same problems as I do or you, if you're just looking for a paper-like surface for your Procreate experience. Alright, back to our video. So the first thing I'm doing right now is on my Procreate, I'm sketching some abstract swirls on the background because this um, mural is going to be very very odd size. It's a very very wide painting. It's about 35 feet long and 6 feet high. So the first thing that I'm doing, I'm just laying down some abstract swirls and directions that I want the swirls to be heading in in the background. So I like to do this so that I can establish the flow of the artwork first and of course on my left side I have some inspiration that gets me going in case I'm stuck with my sketch. One thing to note that if you are creating a visual for a mural, it is not necessary to be very very detailed, especially when it comes to lines, they don't really have to be clean because I believe that the more time we spend on the wall is more valuable than the time spent digitally on the Procreate or on your Mac or on Photoshop because um, the results doesn't really translate as much when you have a perfect artwork digitally and then when it goes to the wall you do not have the skill to paint it onto the wall so I believe that most of our efforts should be spent on the wall so which is why I am being very sketchy at this moment also there has got to be a balance between complex details and really really simple areas where you can just paint really quickly on the wall this is because the details which show how complex and intricate the artwork is on the wall where else the basic areas and simple areas are just areas that you can work through really really quickly without compromising the intricacy of the artwork on the wall. So right now I'm hoping that this intricate background would draw focus onto the beauty of the entire artwork in general. It's also good to mind the duration in which you are creating this artwork digitally. So if you spend one hour doing this digitally, you would roughly spend about four hours on the wall. So right now I've spent about 12 hours just on the swirls and I'm still not done. So I'm pretty concerned about the timeline of this project. This artwork will be painted on a brick wall that is unfinished and unsealed. So now I'm just dumping in a brown to show that the background will be brown because it's a brick wall and I'm just filling in the swirls to see the silhouette of the background. 
now that the background is done, I have a rough idea of how the artwork will flow and this artwork is separated into the left, the middle and the right piece so there are three segments so this is a skewer bar that is serving Japanese skewers, Thai skewers and Chinese skewers so I am representing all three cultures into the different segments here I position the portraits and the elements onto the artwork and I fill in their silhouettes so that I can color them in later but right now I just need the silhouette to be perfect so that I can check the composition I'm also putting different typography for each section to show the country that we are featuring so right here we have Sawadika for the Thai skewer section after I'm done with the positioning of all the typography and elements, I start to fill in and do the hard work of colouring each illustration. Now because this mirror is going to be done on a brick wall, it's not easy to get details in this kind of walls. So I'm trying to keep all the gradients to very very basic minimal shading so that we won't have a tough time blending over irregular surfaces. At the same time, I also understand that there are some details that are necessary to show the intricacy of the artwork. I also want each section to have a skewer to represent the culture that they are in. So right now, here in Japan, we are having a yakitori skewer. The bulk of the work was actually spent on the line art itself because it's actually very very important for this line art to appear bold in the mural painting because the surface is irregular and the surface has multi-color and multi-tone so we are trying to reduce the amount of noise by giving everything a line art. The gradient itself is fairly fairly simple and very very minimal trying to give as little work as possible when it comes to blending so that we can spend most of our time on line art instead. This also means that I have to reduce the amount of details on the face such as wrinkles and crazy highlights because this will greatly increase the duration for the mural painting and it is absolutely not necessary for this brick wall because the surface is uneven and it creates a naturally coarse texture already but of course if this is on a flat wall we would actually require a lot more details if you look carefully majority of the artwork is actually very simple where else all the intricate details are in very very small areas such as the earring and the flowers and the um, necklace that she's wearing but the face is actually very very basic and easy to blend and the hair is basically just a flat color this comes from years and years of experience in this industry a crazy 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 headpiece the face is a little bit more complicated when it comes to blending for this section which is why I crop off most of her clothes and enlarge her face for this section so that we can focus on the headpiece and just the face the reference list that I use are just a reference for the lighting and I'm using my own colors for this portrait because I want most of my color palette to be using the same color so that I don't have to mix so many colors when I am on site 
For the headpiece, I am simplifying as I go along, making sure that everything can be painted with a few colors only and then trying to make everything into patterns. The pattern that I'm talking about means that all the beads have the exact same highlight pattern which is actually just two dots and a smiley curve so it actually just looks like an inverted smiley face for all the beads involved so that it's easy for me to delegate this task to other artists. I've also decided to use gold paint for this piece on the wall and this would really really give a very good impact when it's painted on the wall. Basically, when it comes to complex details like this, it's just a lot of repetitive work involved in creating all the elements. It's not necessarily difficult, it's just repetitive and tedious. If you think about painting this illustration with the amount of beads on them, I think that anyone would also go crazy, but this is what we have decided to do. So as I'm painting this, I roughly know the timeline involved in creating such a mural on the wall. I'm guessing that we will need 4 to 7 days, but it's much probably much realistic to expect a 7 day workflow with about 3 people. With that in mind, I know that doing the swirls at this point is completely unrealistic because the swirls are really really complex and I've decided to instead do this effect on the brick wall that is easily achieved in one day's time. So the 12 hours that I spent doing the swirls are all gone into the air but artwork like that and sketches like that can always be recycled into your next artwork so it's not a huge loss. For this new effect, I'm carefully selecting a palette of colors that are quite limited so that there is not a lot of mixing to do when it comes to doing on the wall and I do not want to create more chaos. I wanted to create a cohesive flow um, from each section to the next. As I'm looking at this artwork, I feel really pleased because I know that the outcome will be spectacular. And I love the deep blues for the hair and some of the accent because this blue is very very pretty when it comes to the paint color because uh, it's actually a high quality wall paint that I purchased and I'm really excited to see the outcome on the wall. So the next thing that I want to do is to mix all the paint for the colors and before I can do that I need to do some maintenance for all my paint. I saw the paint that I use is called Jotun Majestic and basically what I do is I pour them into squeezy ready to squeeze bottles so that I can use them to mix my colors quicker. Looking at all the colors that I have in the visual, I started to mix all the background colors because that is what we'll be doing first tomorrow. So one of the things that you can bear in mind that when it comes to mixing colors, it actually takes a very very long time because there's a lot of colors involved and it's better if you pre-mix all the colors first before you go on to your production of your mural because when you are mixing on site, it actually takes up a lot of time and you're actually wasting a lot of time by being on site especially when the site is not comfortable where you can't sit down or where there's a lot of sun a lot of rain so it's best if you do it in the comfort of your studio where you have things under your control and these kind of plastic containers are really really good for mixing paint especially when it comes to mural but bear in mind that you do not need that much paint because you'll be mixing a lot of colors so try to have all these plastic containers in hand for this complex illustration, I usually use about 2-3 to three hours to mix all the colours but bear in mind that they dry up easily so they need to stay hydrated or sealed properly with a cover. After mixing the colours for the background, I start to prepare some egg carton plastic containers for my other colours. So these colours are needed in small quantities instead of the containers just now. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just sticking duct tape over some of the slots of the holes so that the paint will not drip over when they are being stored. All the hard work of mixing will be gone if you transport these egg carton color palettes to your site when you're driving in your car and then when you get there every color already mixed together because they flow from one side to the other. So because of this, I decided not to mix these colors today and I will only mix them um, the day before I need them so that they do not dry up. So here we 
are at after four and we started by removing all the debris on the wall so because this is a brick wall the cement area are not actually um, sealed in very properly so there's a lot of sand and dust so what we're gonna do is just use the brush and remove all of the dust and debris first before we start so this is my team there's three of us and i'm the one in the black shirt so every day we start work at 7 a.m and we end at 3 p.m because at 4 they start to open up the shop and we serve their customers so we gotta finish up every day by then and that means we have a limited amount of time but we're gonna do our best and see if we can finish this in seven days with the color that I mixed yesterday we started to paint all the bricks in the pastel colors so they are very very close in tonal value and we want to get them as close as possible in tonal value so that we can have the effect of a flat background other than doing the background we are also trying to finish the typography today so we get started by painting the words with the dark blue and as you can see this is a beautiful beautiful vibrant blue color that is from the Jordan Majestic brand because this place is really dark so the lighting is quite bad for the amount of time that we are shooting and painting here so I hope you guys can bear with me I will try and adjust the exposure if anything is overblown so for the background for the bricks we painted the flat area for the bricks first and then we also painted the crevices in between and allowing the paint to drip from the crevices we apply a lot of water because the whole thing is full of sand and they are very very loose I decided to incorporate this technique to introduce some looseness and creativity to the painting process for the background area and also um, by using all the colors with similar tonal values we can actually create a flatter background that can make the illustration pop more instead of just a very very noisy bricks background being able to paint loosely for the bricks is a very liberating process because we can freely just apply our creativity as we go along so this visual is elevated four feet off the ground because the tables and the chairs are permanently here and we do not want the illustration to be blocked by them so that the guests that come here to eat and drink will be able to enjoy our illustration fully because of this we have to utilize their chairs and our chairs as well to get to the height that we need and this results in a longer time span for this mural because it takes time to climb up and down the chairs all the time so to help us with the painting of the mural we actually stuck the mock-up that we printed before on the wall so that we can refer to them anytime and now I realize that the color I mixed for the background for the fish area are a little bit too much in contrast and I might need to fix this later on the effect that I'm looking for actually something like this on the left side where the colors are like almost melding into each other so you can't really tell the difference from far the rough edges of the background contrast highly with the sharp edges for the typography and this really really draw attention to the dark blue of the typography and this is the end of day one Today is day 2 and we are trying to finish up the background for the right side and also I'm starting to work on the skewers for each piece of the wall. One of the advantages of painting on a brick wall is that there's not much blending or details required because of the nature of the wall, it appears like it's already very very detailed. But the bad thing about this wall is that it's really really hard to do details because of the crevices in between the bricks so it's kind of like a difficult situation to be stuck in if you see in the video i'm holding a paint tray and the paint tray contained a bowl of water some brushes and the palette for the colors that i need so everything is within reach and i can hold everything up while i'm climbing on the staircase or standing on top of a chair so i don't have to keep reaching down and get my tools or the paint as i'm painting the fish i realize something is very very wrong because it does not pop like the rest of the visual i think it's the white because it's pure white so it looks something is off but then i'm not gonna adjust the white anymore and i'm gonna see if i can fix it so to fix it, I decided to line the whole fish in gold and also to do details in gold as well that is not included in the original visual and hopefully this will fix everything. 
the background also has to be edited down because there's too many colors so it makes the visual very busy right now behind the fish now that the background is done we can now project the portrait and position them to avoid the beams and the speaker then we use the marker and some paint to sketch the entire thing we use a lot of projectors in our workflow because we can duplicate the artwork exactly as the visual that was approved by a client and we can work more efficiently as a team that way because for this wall for example if I were to sketch it only I can sketch it because I was the one that did the visual but using a projector then we can work more efficiently as a team so at the end of day two all the sketches are done the background are done and all the skewers are also finished it's day three today and we are trying to finish the yakuza in the center of the artwork so today we are just focusing on the mask and the guy for this side of the artwork the most detailed part lies in the mask and the tattoo so definitely there will be a lot of time spent on these two areas if you take a look at the outline of the artwork they are actually very very thick about 5 mm thick so this will add a very very bold touch to the artwork itself because the chinese girl's side has a lot of details in the headpiece so we're also getting started here today and trying to make up for time when it comes to this part of the wall day 4 has arrived and by now we pretty much have a very very complete color palette already and this is the egg carton that i was preparing earlier on with all the mixed paint inside today we're finishing up the japanese guy and and only the tattoo is left before we finish it completely the tattoo takes a long long time to paint but when it's done it'll definitely be worth it it's just some minor touch-ups and finishing up some of the details for the guy but mainly it's almost done and this is how it looks like when it's done the details are really really sharp and the lighting is flat because we put more lights there to show you guys how it looks like once it's completed for this side when one part is already completed we have to mix more colors for the other sections of the wall instead of throwing away all the leftover paint i then mod all the paint so that they become a different color and we can reuse them for other parts of the painting we also slowly begin to gain progress on the chinese girl area now I'm going to show you how I blend the skin tone for the portrait So basically I try and fill up at all the crevices first And make sure that I have an opaque area for blending Once I've blocked out all the colours for the first layer I redo everything again the second time And I, for this time I blend everything out nicely So here I'm doing the exact same thing for the lips I block out the colours first once the color has been blocked out, I then repeat the same thing again and blend everything out. So everything happens in within about 15 to 20 minutes because the paint needs to be wet in order for it to be blendable. After I'm done with the gradients and the blending, I use hard edges to put on highlights. And I repeat the same thing for the face. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use a bigger brush because I need this angled brush to push all the paint into the crevices. And by the end of the project, the brush is destroyed. One advantage of painting on this brick wall is that blending is really really easy and you can get away with hard edges even and it will still look blended due to the uneven surface. Once the skin tone is done, I start to put down all the highlights and the dark shadows. The reason I chose a heavy line art for this illustration is that we can go slightly messier on the edges for the blending and the colouring and then we can after that clean it up with a pretty line art around the edges. So this helps save time because we don't have to do precise edges for the rest of the painting. For the neck piece, I figured things out as I paint along and after I finished the neck piece, I found out the process for the gold parts of all the paintings. After that, painting the other gold parts are slightly easier because I've already figured out the workflow for painting gold. Meanwhile, we got started on the tropical plants and try to finish as much as we can today. And that's all for day 4. Our brushes are mostly flats because they are more suitable for mural painting and also it's finally day 5 and we have two more portraits to complete. 
Today I'll be focusing mainly on all the goal effects for all the portraits where else they will assist me on the other elements of the painting like the flowers and also some of the head pieces for the other side. If you look closely to what I'm doing right now, I'm actually using a big angle brush to block out the shapes in one single colour first and this is actually a dark brown. Because the sketch was not accurate, so I had to do this first to refix all the sketch and that's why I'm redoing the entire block out of all the colour for the entire piece first. Next, I go to a lighter colour and put down all the mid-tones for the entire piece and I follow the rules of lighting from the left side for the highlights. Next, I use a dark brown which is similar to black and then I start to do the darker shadows for each element in the head piece and this will usually create some sort of an outline but not a complete outline as there will be a blue outline as usual for the head piece as well. So this is also the first step in cleaning up the sketch by using this colour and I will fix the sketch using this colour as much as I can first before I proceed to dark blue. Now as you can see I'm gonna use the dark blue and do the outline completely and also fill in all the hair that has been missed previously to complete the border for the headpiece. So when I'm done it finally looks a little bit more completed and of course the last step to do for the headpiece is to throw in the final highlights for the goal and this would be the most exciting part because it will really give the headpiece a pop once I do it. So here I'm doing the final highlights for the headpiece and as I expected it popped and it looks really really good so I finally figured out how to paint this gold effect for the material and it definitely looked better than the neck piece that I painted yesterday. This is the reason why artists usually do multiple studies before they attempt a big piece so that they can solve all the problems and figure out the workflow for every element in the studies first before doing the big actual one. So if I had did a study before um, in my studio then my neck piece would look a lot better than it does now. To show you the difference you can just take a look at the head piece here and in comparison with the neck piece right here. So as I was doing the head piece, Kelvin was painting the flowers and the leaves and this has a lot of blending to be done. There's yellow, there's orange, there's red, there's pink, there's white, grey and green. So it's a very very complex kind of blending and it takes a long time to get the blending to be correct. This is Kelvin's second time painting flowers and plants and I'm pretty sure he's sick of it by now. Meanwhile, Logan has been doing pearls and circles since the day before and I'm also pretty sure he's very much sick by doing circles and pearls by now. There's hundreds and hundreds of pearls in the headpiece for this girl here so good luck to all of us. So I came here to do the headpiece and I started by doing the shadow first followed by the mid-tones and right now I'm just cleaning up everything because there's so many gold effects right here and I think I missed a few of them. So now I've reached the stage of doing the darkest brown which is similar to black for all the gold pieces and I started putting down all the shadows for every single element while Logan lined the headpiece with a dark blue. Here's how what it looks like after I've painted the pearls for the headband. There is an insane amount of pearls that we need to paint and it's gonna be crazy. And here I'm just lining the gold pieces with dark blue and I don't even bother to fill it in yet because there's just so much work to be done. Do you know what's worse than painting hundreds and hundreds of pearls? Well, what's worse is lining hundreds and hundreds of pearls. Well, after this, I painted on the highlights and we filled in the blanks. It took us the whole day to finish, but when it's done, it really, really looked very, very good. 
So this is our handy trolley that we can compress and keep flat when we are not using and when we are using it, we are just dumping in all our paint into this handy box where we can just drag it wherever we need. Today is our last day and we only have the flowers for the Thai girl side to be painted on and also we have a projection for a logo and that's about it. So here we're discussing how we're going to project the logo on the wall and we have to raise the projector higher than usual to get it to be the height that we want. It's always a little haphazard on the last day because we are juggling with very different things. So now I'm juggling with painting the flowers and also assisting them with the projection and they are also doing the same for me. It is our last day together for this project and we finally are going to finish this piece. So this is how everything looks like when we project the logo. Now that they have finally positioned the projection, they can get started with the logo while I quickly finish the flowers. All of us are you know, very relaxed mode today and we are just having fun. So after a while, I decided that I need more help with the flowers and I got Logan to help me to block in all the greens first. It takes a long time to block in any colour for this area because the sand between the bricks here are really really bad. Although the blending for the flowers are very complex but once the colours is all painted, it looks very very vibrant and saturated and it gives a really really nice um, tropical feeling to the Thai girl area. When you are painting greens and leaves, make sure that you use a lot of greys when you mix your greens so that they are not very very vibrant. The reason is when the green is very vibrant, it can be really harsh on the eye. But by mixing grey with green and yellows, you get really really pretty colours that you can use for your flowers and your leaves. So here I'm finally doing the dark blue outline for the flowers and the leaf. I love doing outlines because it really finishes the illustration really really well and it cleans up all the rough edges and uneven lines. Once the flower has been completed, then we are finally done with the Thai girl section and that actually concludes our three illustrations for the wall while we wait for the projection painting to be finished. The logo for the projection is just done in gold and they will paint the rest of the wall black once we are um, done with our job today so we are not responsible for the flat painting of their wall so what we did is we created an outline around the gold words There you have it, everything from beginning to end, starting from the digital illustration. right up to the painting and also the completion of the mural i hope you guys enjoy this video remember that this uh, video is sponsored by paper like a screen protector for ipad that can create a paper texture when you are using your procreate or your ipad just in general check out their website at paper.me slash haze one and thank you so much for watching catch up with you guys again next time bye